Okay, just got this uh, Sonoff smart wall switch um, to replace a single gang UK uh, light switch. Um, so let's just have a look what it supports. Works with Google Assistant, works with Amazon Alexa, Nest, and IFTT. Um, the model number, let's have a look at the back. It's uh, TX T4. EU1C. <clears throat> Give you a close up of uh, the back there. So let's see what's inside. Looks like uh, I'll open with this. It's instructions. So just have a look at the instructions. Okay, so this side is in Chinese. I'm going to turn it over. Right, there we go. The English instructions. Um, so yeah, okay, power off your electricity. Always uh, wise to do that. Um, obviously, you've got to be a competent, competent with electrics. Otherwise, just don't do it. Uh, use an electrician. Uh, you can see the wiring diagram. So this one is no neutral wire in the switch itself that they give you. Um, <clears throat> it's the live input into um, live, and then the output of the switched live goes to the bulb, and <clears throat> the bulb, um, around the bulb, you get an anti-flicker module, because um, I did, get one of these a long time ago and I noticed the LEDs were flickering I um, didn't know why and I think now they give you a anti-flicker module I think that's just a capacitor um, so let's go and move on here talks to talks about the app what to download the app and it gives you information about pairing and what else just some specifications And that's it. So let's have a look what else is inside the box now. So you've got the light switch itself. Let's take it out. <clears throat> Check out the back. So as I say, L in and then the switch to out. So it should be fairly straightforward to swap out from a standard socket. I'm not sure about the fitting, whether the fitting it will fit into a um, standard socket. It should be okay because there's two holes on the side. Um, okay, so what else? Let's have a look. Right, that's the capacitor. The anti-flicker module, as they called it. And some screws. And that's all, that's it. Alright, you can see the state of the old socket. Uh, and you can see why I'm replacing it. Uh, just completely broken. And what better way to replace this with than with a, a Wi-Fi controlled smart socket, uh, smart switch. Um, so I've turned the power off and uh, yeah, the main power off and I'm going to remove this now right, back to the uh, switch so I'm going to open the switch up and remove that front plate off um, there's some tabs I'll stick a screwdriver in um, so you can see the tabs there and there and then two at the bottom so I'm going to do that I'm just one handed uh, with my phone I'm going to pause it. Yep, so I've just gone through the tabs and managed to remove it. So you get inside. So, yep, you can see the holes on the sides and the top. 
They're probably the UK ones on the sides of fit, hopefully. So old socket. Right. Just focus there. So you have a live and a switch live. Um, just standard socket. It's just completely disintegrated. Um, and remove those screws and then loosen the wires. Okay, I want to establish which one's live. Um, so I've just turned the electricity back on for a minute and I'm just going to test it because I wasn't sure which one. So the red one is actually live, yes. Right, so I've screwed the, uh, the live and the switch live in. Yeah. Um, it's fairly straightforward. You need a fairly deep back box. Uh, I think mine should do 35 millimeters, I believe. Um, right, I'm going to screw it into the wall now. Well, I've got these um, slightly longer screws that they supply this shorter one, and it didn't fit in there. Well, it didn't fit into the UK socket, so I just got the standard ones. You can get these from. Um, my screw fix or tool station um, so you can see the old one it, it's not it's, it's not good enough well, I couldn't do the long ones because the back wasn't the back box wasn't big enough um, I just about managed with these the old original screws because the new ones they give you with it didn't go into the back back box um, you know the screw the screw holes um, so um, I put them in it seems secure um, yeah, it's, it's fairly secure. Right. Um, I think that should be fine. It's not going to come off. Um, I've had a good old tug. Um, and now I'm going to put the back box, back, uh, the front box plate back on. So just front plate just over there. That's all. All done. Right. I'm going to turn the electricity on now. All right, turn the electricity on. It's in now. It's come on. It's in pairing mode. So it's trying to pair with the app. So I'm going to download the app. Right, so I have these uh, LED spotlights and uh, I've got four of them in this room. Um, on one of them, I've installed the capacitor uh, just around the uh, live and new, well, the live and switch live going to the light um, and that's it and I'm going to push it all back in hopefully that's hidden in the ceiling so I downloaded the app uh, it was the eWee link app um, that's good because that's the one I use for my um, other Sonoff Zigbee devices um, so the switch is there all connected up when I press the switch it lights up when I touch it again, it goes off. Um, uh, I mean, that blue light should have been a bit dimmer. But it's not that bright. Um, and then in the app, I get an on and off button and I can start doing lots of um, automation with it. For example, um, if I put a motion sensor in here, um, as soon as somebody comes in, the light will go off, uh, go, go on. Um, and various other sort of automations uh, which you can research yourself. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward. Just download the eWe Link app, um, put it into pairing mode, hold it for five seconds. If uh, initially when you when you turn it on, it goes into pairing mode, um, but after three minutes it'll stop. So you have to press it or touch it for five seconds again to put it back into pairing mode. Then in the eWe Link app, just do um, go to the pairing, um, and it should find the device. Um, my firmware was 3.3 uh, initially, um, and it, 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 it detected that it needed a firmware upgrade on the uh, light switch, so it gave me a firmware upgrade to 4.41, I think it was. Um, so yeah, that's it, all sorted. Thanks.